Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 31 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. As we wrap up this course, I wanna focus on the final touches you'll add to your project before you bounce your final mix or export your final project as a stereo WAV file for distribution. In this video, I'm going to focus on the stereo output and how to use the mastering assistant, which was introduced in Logic 10.8. So off screen, I did a full mix of my song Running Out of Time. I used a combination of third party plugins and stock Logic plugins for this. And like I said, we're gonna be dipping into sort of mastering territory with this video, but I do wanna stress that professional mastering engineers do not master this way. When I do professional mastering work, I use a hybrid approach with some third-party plugins like Ozone along with some others. And I also tend to use some hardware in the master as well. And that's kind of outside the scope of this course, but I do wanna show you the mastering assistant. So at least bare minimum, you can sort of pull off a passable master of your project. And I do highly recommend, even if you mix your project, I highly recommend to have a professional mastering engineer finalize your songs. Before we dive in, let me share a bit about our sponsor, Boombox. If you're in the music scene, this platform is a game changer. It's got everything you need for file storage, collaboration, and networking all in one spot. With Boombox, securely store all of your audio files, whether they're tracks, stems, or full DAW sessions. You can invite others to work on projects with you and create custom inboxes for clients to upload files directly to you. Boombox also helps you connect with other musicians. Build an artist profile to showcase your work, search for collaborators, and create playlists to share your favorite tracks. And you can also tap into the power of BoomBot AI, your personal AI assistant that'll help you write lyrics and generate MIDI musical ideas. Head over to boombox.io and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage today. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the stereo output and the master fader are both set to unity, that is 0.0, .0 dB, so we don't want any added or reduced gain. And you also wanna check your stereo output for clipping. So let's just play a little portion of the song here. You've got your secrets, but they don't face me. I see love in your eyes and trust in your smile. Yeah, so there's definitely some uh, clipping there. Now there's two approaches to this. Sort of the lazy way to do this would just be to add the gain plugin to the stereo output and drop down the gain a bit. I recommend leaving around 6 dB of headroom to allow the mastering assistant and any other mastering plugins you might add some breathing room. Um, so if I'm clipping by like 1.2 dB, I may want to drop this by around 7 db to get that 6 db of headroom probably the better way to do this is just to go to the last summed channels in your mix and pull them down so i'm just going to pull these down until i've got roughly 6 db of headroom and you can see here i have all my vocals in one stack i've got all my instrumental in another stack and then i've got the snaps track as well you've got your secrets but they don't face me i see love in So we've got some peaks up near like negative three dB, but most of the energy is around negative six. So I think that's uh, just fine for this. We are gonna get that volume back later when we set the final loudness level of the track. So in order to load up the mastering assistant, you're just gonna click on this mastering insert here that's at the bottom of the stereo output track. You can do this in two different ways. If you don't have anything selected with the cycle range, this will analyze your entire track and this will come up with a suggested mastering chain for you. What you can also do is you can set the cycle range around one section of your song and you can use that as the reference. What I typically do is I use the loudest part of my song as the mastering reference. So I'm gonna set this to just the final chorus, which is the loudest section of my song, and then click on the mastering insert, and this will analyze the song and create a custom mastering chain preset as a starting point. Okay, so once mastering assistant has analyzed the track, you can start working with it. 
You can see there's really three main areas. There's a dynamics section, a spread section, along with a frequency EQ section. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to reset the width and I'll worry about that later. If there's any loudness that's added, I'm gonna worry about that later as well. So let's just focus on the EQ section for now and the character section. So the character will affect the character you want applied to the processing. So transparent is a sort of a digital approach with no tone coloration. Clean is going to mimic like transistor processing. Valve is going to mimic tube processing and punch is going to be more of a transient focused mode. I actually recommend working in transparent mode for minimal coloration of the tone and then dial in the mastering settings you like, then go back to the character and toggle between these four and see which one you like the best. So that's what I'm gonna do for this video. I'm just gonna start on transparent. And first let's talk about the auto EQ. So the auto EQ essentially analyzes your track and tries to automatically compensate for frequency imbalances that mastering assistant doesn't like. And you can apply this above 100%, below 100%, or 0% if you just want to completely bypass it. Girl, we've got a light this sometime. You know we've got to grow up, create the season so them. I told you that we're running. In addition, there are three different bands here that you can control, a low shelf, a high shelf, and then a mid frequency band. So this is the custom EQ and you can pull this in and out here. So if you don't wanna use it, you can pull it out. If you do wanna use it, you can pull it in. So let's maybe add a little more top end for a little more uh, high frequency shimmer. You know we've got it grow up, create the season so them. I told you that we're running out. Awesome. So next up, let's move over to the spread section. This is where you can add stereo width to your master, or you can reduce the stereo width. So if you have a track that seems a little too narrow, you can make it a little wider, or maybe you have a track that sounds a little unfocused and you need more center definition and center punch, you can pull this down. Now, as you're using the spread control, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this correlation meter. What the correlation meter does is it shows you any phase cancellation that's happening between the left and right channels. Plus one means that the two channels are 100% in phase, so essentially like dual mono, and then negative one means they're like completely out of phase. So in general, you wanna keep this above zero and preferably for, you know, for my personal preference, I like to keep this very close to plus one. You know we've got to grow up, create the season so them. I told you that we're running out of time. Don't tell me that you're faithless. So you can see when I add more stereo spread, it kind of creates a cool effect, but you can see that the correlation is dipping below uh, zero. Whereas if I pull it over to the left, you're gonna see it even closer to plus one. You know we've got it grow up, create the season so them. I told you that we're running out of time. Don't tell me that you're faithless. Tell me that you feel less. I told yeah, I think that's a good setting there. I'm at about 0.7, so still closer to one than to zero. So for the most part, the left and right channels are in phase. And what this does is it helps with two things. It helps with mono compatibility. When you listen to a song in mono, like on a little portable speaker or something, it just sums the left and right channels together. And if your correlation is really low, like it's dipping below zero, information on the left and right channels are going to be canceled out. Whereas the closer your signal is to plus one, the more mono compatible it's going to be. Meaning when you sum the left and right channels together, you're not gonna get as much phase cancellation, not as much loss of that information. And there is a way to see what your song will sound like in mono. 
just load up the gain plugin after the mastering assistant and then just click mono and that's going to sum the left and right channels together so you can get an idea of the information that's lost in mono you know we've got it roll up create the seeds and sow them i told you that we're running out of time don't tell me that you're faithless so here we're losing some of those reverbs that are far off to the sides Maybe some of the backing vocals on the sides are, are having a little bit of loss, but overall, it's not too bad. And then this brings us to the dynamics section, which has a loudness control. Uh, this also has a limiter built into it that automatically sets up a negative one true peak ceiling. So there's no need to add an additional limiter after the mastering assistant. It's actually built into the mastering assistant. There's also an exciter, which will just sort of saturate the signal. This is just simply on or off. And then there's a loudness meter, which we'll talk about in just a bit. So let's just hear what the exciter sounds like for now. You know we've got to throw up, create the seeds and sow them. I told you that we're running out of time. Don't tell me that you're faithless. Tell me that you feel this. Okay, I like it. Now, the last thing we need to do here is we need to adjust the loudness level and meter the overall loudness. Now, this is in no way a full tutorial on loudness levels in music, and I'm not going to, you know, debate anyone about loudness levels in music. But as a general rule, if you use like Spotify as a reference, Spotify's loudness standards are negative 14 LUFS or LUFS. That's loudness units relative to full scale. This is a measurement of loudness that is more accurate than, say, peak or RMS DBFS measurements. It's weighted differently. It's a K weighting. It used to be called LKFS for that reason. And generally, like for Spotify, their loudness standards are negative 14 LUFS. Now, the misconception here is that that means that your music should be mastered at negative 14 LUFS. That's completely wrong. Negative 14 is a minimum loudness standard. So in general, like if I'm mixing a song that's really soft, maybe it's classical music or, you know, something that has a lot of dynamics to it, but overall is a softer tune. Yeah, I might I might do like negative 14, negative 13, but for like pop music, rock music, I'm usually shooting for up around negative 10. But at the same time, I don't want you to pay so much attention to the number as paying attention to how the music sounds. Certain music and certain instrumentations handle louder dynamics better than others. So the way this works is you click start to start monitoring. And you're going to get four different measurements here, an LU range, momentary loudness, short-term loudness, and integrated loudness. Integrated loudness is like your long-term loudness. So I generally use integrated loudness for my loudness measurement. So really all you got to do is play the loudest portion of your track with this running. And if you make any changes to the mastering assistant while this is running, you're going to want to click the reset button to reset the metering. Generally speaking, you want to listen to a pretty long chunk of the song, maybe like 20 to 40 seconds to get an accurate integrated reading. You know we've got to grow up, create the seeds and sow them. I told you that we're running out of time. Don't so even though the momentary and short term are kind of up near negative 10, negative 11, the integrated is around negative 12. So we have a little bit of room to grow here. And just a quick side note here, all of the musical examples you've heard up to this point have been lowered by 1 dB in post, and all examples you'll hear from this point forward will be lowered by 3 dB in post. I just don't want the huge difference between my negative 20 luffs voiceover and the negative 10 luffs master to be a shock to your ears. You know we've got it grow up, create the seeds and sow them. I told you that we're running out of time. Don't tell me that you're faithless. Tell me that you feel less. I told you that we're running out of time. You know we've got to grow up, create the seeds and sow them. 
so what I generally do is, again, I'm not paying attention to the number so much, although I usually find that I'm around negative 10. What I do is I push the loudness up to the point where I feel like the song is starting to lose clarity, and then I back it off a little bit. So I think this is a good setting for where we are right now. Now, one last thing you can try out here is the loudness compensation. Essentially what this is, is it's a volume match or a loudness match for when you use the built-in bypass, not this bypass, this bypass. What this is gonna do is it's gonna drop out all of the effects in the mastering assistant and show you the original track, but it's going to lower the loudness of the mastering assistant so that you're not getting like a biased result. Very often our ears will perceive something that's louder as better. So we actually wanna hear the changes mastering assistant is making to the track not just the loudness increase. So generally what I like to do is after I do all of this, I'll turn on the loudness compensation, then bypass this a few times to hear the before and after without a volume change, without a loudness change. You know we've got it wrong. Yeah, the transients are really popping out more. There's more clarity in the vocals. It's it's wider. It's just fuller and bigger and more silky sounding. So I like that. So I'm going to turn off the loudness compensation for now. And like I said before, I personally like to go through the character after I've dialed in the other settings. And most of the time, I find myself just landing back on transparent. So let's see what all four of these sound like. You know we've got it wrong. Yeah, ultimately, I ended up going back to transparent. The valve's got like a really cool mojo to it, but at the same time, it kind of makes certain spots a little mushy, uh, which I'm not liking. And it's also affecting the loudness uh, uh, level as well. So just keep in mind, you switch the character, it's going to switch the way all of these different controls react and, and how they sound. Okay, so that is the mastering assistant in Logic Pro. You can add additional plugins after the mastering assistant or before the mastering assistant if you want. I do not really recommend adding much after it because that means that you're adding plugins after the limiter that's already built into the mastering assistant. But if there's a plugin that a certain plugin that you want in your master before the mastering assistant, you can certainly add it before the mastering assistant. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.